Hello everyone, my name is Fox. Recently a tweet from the Digital Foundry Twitter account confirmed that the Steam Deck does not have a variable refresh rate or VRR panel. And while VRR would have been awesome, more options are always better, I find it easy to spin this news into a positive. Before I get to that, this video will be split into five different parts. My take on why VRR isn't here, VRR is still available, just not on the Steam Deck's internal display. Speculation by me, Custom refresh rates may help in some cases. And then these two are together, part four and five. Valve says there will be a built-in frame limiter and VRR is actually not a great solution for portable devices. So first, we have confirmation VRR isn't there. And here's my educated guess as to why that is. If we take a look at every one of these handhelds, what do you think is the commonality between all of the displays? Every one of these uses the MIPI DSi interface. The most common support for VRR on PC is on the DisplayPort spec and the new HDMI 2.1 spec. By far, DisplayPort is the most typical, but that means we need an EDP or embedded DisplayPort display to have VRR. I am aware of PSR on the MIPI DSi spec, but for the life of me, I've never seen one MIPI-based display actually support VRR. The alternative is that Van Gogh only supports EDP and Valve still got an EDP interface. However, remember that Valve is looking to make the Steam Deck very cost effective. My personal take is that Valve worked with a supplier who already had a type of 1280 by 800 IPS LCD done, and they just need a quantity of them. My own personal questions that I've asked and never heard a response back on is if the panel is landscape or portrait native. This matters less for Linux and wrapping Windows APIs, but when using the Steam Deck with Windows for those users, some older games will need to be wrapped to work on a native portrait-based display. But I've digressed a bit here. So number one, the reason is cost and availability. Perhaps with a Steam Deck 2, if the first Steam Deck is successful enough, maybe Valve will have the data they need that X million amount of customers will be buying it, and they can use that information to have a production run of custom displays. Second, VRR is technically still available, it's just only able to be used while docked. There are actual benefits in this situation, and I'll circle back to this point after I explain myself for point number five. Third, we don't yet actually know the limitations of the LCD itself. It may be possible to modulate the refresh rate on the LCD and set it for 40 hertz or 50 hertz. This is kind of an open question, and I anticipate that when people start getting their Steam Deck, that people start exploring. Fourth and fifth, Valve has already said that a built-in frame limiter will be available, which basically amounts to there being two specific frame rate targets on the outset, a 30 FPS target and a 60 FPS target. Not all frame limiters are built the same, however. I'll touch base more on that as I explain number five. VRR is actually not a great solution for portable devices. Let me explain. In this particular video that you see here, I'm spending 17 watts on TDP. You can also see how much power the CPU cores are taking, as well as the GPU cores. By far, the GPU cores are spiking the highest here and taking the lion's share of the power. One segment of power you don't see is the Encore power, which largely, as far as I can tell, is the L3 cache on the APU. Additionally, if you've been watching here, frame rate has kind of been all over the place, but kind of around 45 FPS. VRR would be beneficial to use in this situation as it could smooth out gameplay. However, we do need to take a step back here and realize what is actually happening. We are pushing this particular platform as hard as it can go. This is going to produce the worst battery life possible on the device. We have to remember that on portable devices, we are battling a lot of different forces and the ultimate enemy for portable devices is always the battery. I want to hammer home this point. VRR would be cool and options are always great. However, we know that we don't have VRR on the Steam Deck. So I'm just trying to find the silver lining here. If we look at this one example of a game, another way to look at VRR on a portable device is the following. VRR encourages users to push TDP to the max at all times. Or put another way, VRR encourages users to have the worst battery life possible. To prove this point, let's get back to talking about frame limiting and the dock. First, frame limiting. There are many ways to frame cap. I'm going to show you two, and they are both Windows-based solutions. First, we're going to use RTSS and cap frame rate to 30. While frame time gets very smooth, we can see that TDP doesn't actually change. This isn't worthwhile. However, if we use a driver level frame limiter, which AMD calls Radeon Chill, and set min and max to the same 30 FPS, 
we do actually have a considerable reduction in TDP. It's here that I'd like to point out how big of a difference this is making. Remember when we didn't cap frame rates, TDP was 17 watt, but total system power is close to 26 watts total. I'd anticipate the Steam Deck actually having better total system power here for a variety of reasons, but topmost being my expectations of it being monolithic. But hypothetically, let's say this 26 watt of total power and pair it with a 40 watt hour battery. In this particular instance, we would get 95 minutes on the Steam Deck's battery. Now, for those wondering, because the Steam Deck tops out at 15 watts actually, and because of my expectations that are closer to 7 watt of total system power, I personally feel 22 watts is the more reasonable top end total system power for the Steam Deck. So a more realistic example for the Steam Deck where we're just spending the max TDP to get around 45 FPS, we would get 110 minutes of battery life, slightly under two hours. But here in this, using Radeon Chill and targeting 30 FPS, on this platform I have a 10 watt reduction. To put that in perspective, a total 10 watt reduction on the Steam Deck would get it down to 12 watt total system power, or 3 hours and 20 minutes of battery life. Again, with VRR we would encourage users to get 110 minutes of battery life. Now, that's their option, and if they wanted it, sure, I can get behind that. What I'm trying to highlight here is that since 100% there is no VRR on the Steam Deck, instead of hitting middling 45 FPS, we can instead cap to 30 and still get a consistent experience, but we also just doubled our battery life from 110 minutes to 210 minutes of battery life. When I reviewed the Win 3 and Win Max, I specifically said under two hours of gameplay is not great. This isn't some new feeling I have. My personal feelings is that three hours of battery life is an okay amount of time and four hours being good. In this one particular hypothetical example, we could hit an okay amount of battery life by frame capping to 30. Also, let's not forget the dock, which when outputting via DisplayPort, which is 1.4 spec, it does support VRR. And because you're docked, you don't have any concerns about battery life. So go ahead and rev the engine when the gasoline is infinite. One quick bonus part of this video, I'm doing a Steam Deck approximation video, which there have been numerous amounts of. The particular way I'm going to do it is by calculating how much power each component takes on Renoir. Zen 2 should be nearly 1 to 1. So if I get power usage on cores and specific frequencies, which I already have, and I examine how much power Vega needs and uses AMD's own claims, we can approximate performance. When looking back at the Sekiro video, at 17 watt on 4500U, we are near max performance on that platform. In one of my previous videos, I said Van Gogh will be 1.6 to 1.8 times the performance per watt. I still stand by that number. However, remember that the Neo uses 15% more power than the Steam Deck does. So if we compare the Steam Deck at 15 watt versus the Aya Neo at 17 watt, the performance difference is closer to 1.4 to 1.5x better. But don't forget that Proton does wonders. In my Ionia Proton video, Dark Souls 3 has a considerable performance improvement over Windows with the same TDP. There's lots of performance on the table here, guys. A 35% bump is a conservative amount, and I'm sure we'll hit Sekiro at 800p60 with low settings and get a bit over two hours of battery life. I'll be able to approximate battery life at 800p30 in the video proper and across more titles, so please do stay tuned for that. As always, guys, thank you for your time, and thanks for watching.